is a problem that outreach workers face with some of their key clients um, because uh, although it might seem a simple solution to simply hurry them off into a hostel, uh, no sooner were you to do that than they'd be out the next day. They have multiple problems and a suspicion of those sorts of places and, uh, and uh, an unwillingness to engage with services that might need to be worked out over a considerable amount of time. And while that work's going on, they're probably going to be out there in the middle of the city uh, in a context which they have managed to make their own, uh, perhaps comfortably so, in a, in a, in a sense. And um, we were struck, so, uh, sorry, there, there's the first mention of Gotham. We were struck by a paper by Nigel Thrift, who'd written about care and repair in the city and suggested that it, that, that, that it might be a, um, I don't know if you know the, the paper, um, I'll say something about this in just a minute, suggested that uh, uh, we might do well to think um, um, no more about grand utopian visions for the city and no more about anxiety in terms of catastrophic uh, collapse of urban environments, but to recognize the resi urban resilience that proceeds from the ongoing, often unobserved, but uh, 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 work a day, uh, um, highly significant in aggregate labor of repair, everything from mending potholes to repainting signs to patching up cars that have broken down, popping the hood, uh, uh, <coughs> and, and um, uh, in a paper that was out this year, most recent one, we, we kind of took issue with thrift um, over that. Um, or rather argued with, not so much against thrift in the way in which he talks about repair. Um, how did we do that? Um, how I should explain the image, and I'll explain how we did it, and then I'll hand over to Rob. Um, in the paper, we make reference to uh, a book by Alan Weissman, a, a US journalist called The World Without Us, where, um, in the first chapter of which he imagines what would happen to the city. Here is a catastrophic vision. If, uh, if there were no more people anymore. And he basically tells the story um, premised on the retreat and the absence of any care and repair and maintenance activities. Uh, and the whole thing falls apart in a matter of days and weeks. I mean, it's more effectively so than, than any um, military strike might have, you know. Um, uh, so he kind of tells, tells Thrift's story from the other end. And in the article on uh, care and repair, Rob and I um, took Thrift at his word and who invites us to think socially and politically about what we might learn from paying attention to mundane everyday activities of repair uh, and we would looked at uh, outreach as an instance of social repair and suggested that um, Thrift's uh, thinking about repair could be nuanced a bit um, because uh, as soon as you move to the social you start to have a uh, a very different relationship between the person doing the repairing and the thing or object or person on the receipt of that. You can scrub a street as hard as you like if you want to clean it as part of an act of ongoing maintenance, but you can't be rubbed uh, in a reciprocal relationship of care um, uh, 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 with a person. It needs a, it needs a, a, a lighter touch in that way. Um, I'm so aware of time uh, that perhaps I ought to, you know, uh, allow Rob to jump in at this point. But that's, what, that's where we've got to um, with mobility, um, patrol, uh, <coughs> light touch, uh, looking out for and looking after care and repair, and, and we're going further. So, um, yeah, thanks Tom. Um, so uh, this work has led us up to, and uh, Tom's let me do the bit where I have to stick my neck out, because this is stuff that's uh, in development rather than published already, which is very good of him. Um, it seems like a good place to do it. Um, <laughs> so this has led us up to increasingly thinking uh, in a bit of a broader sense, perhaps, about the, the constitution of city space and city territories in and through pedestrian mobilities. And obviously we've got a really good case to start exploring. Um, some, some of the frictions and pressures, to use some of that nice language that Mimi was using earlier, I'll come back to that later, um, in, in everyday mobilities in public space. And we got particularly interested in how outreach workers might be said to produce a kind of moral geography of the city, um, nested at different scales. Uh, and again, this is somewhat reminiscent of, of Monica's work on the reciprocity of gesture of, across different scales and, and different uh, mobility networks. But, but here um, you can see a, an outreach worker um, uh, working with a client very early in the morning, waking him up in fact uh, um, and we're quite interested in a way in thinking through interactionally how the territory of homelessness is here um, a, a kind of co-accomplishment, an interactional embodied accomplishment by crouching down hand on the shoulder morning Dave, you alright Dave um, it's, it's an act of respect and regard to use uh, Gotham's language which recognises this kind of meagre collection of belongings and, and the sleeping body as a, as a a territory from which a social relationship might be formed. Um, 
in what it plays out in different ways if there's a you know if they find somebody who's managed to set up some kind of temporary camp with a canvas later um, in in everyday mobilities in public space and we got particularly interested in how outreach workers might be said to produce a kind of moral geography of the city um, nested at different scales uh, and again this is somewhat reminiscent of, of Monica's work on the reciprocity of gesture of, across different scales and, and different uh, mobility networks but, but here um, you can see a, an outreach worker um, uh, working with a client very early in the morning, waking him up in fact uh, um, and we're quite interested in a way in thinking through interactionally how the territory of homelessness is here um, a, a kind of co-accomplishment an interactional embodied accomplishment by crouching down hand on the shoulder. Morning, Dave. You all right, Dave? Um, it's, it's an act of respect and regard, to use uh, Goffman's language, which recognises this kind of meagre collection of belongings and, and the sleeping body as, a, as a, a territory from which a social relationship might be formed. Um, in what, it plays out in different ways if, there's a, you know, if they find somebody who's managed to set up some kind of temporary camp with a canvas, nothing more than a canvas on a bit of string tied between two trees, a knock on the canvas. Morning, mate, you in there? Who's in there? You all right? You all right? A knock on the tent. Uh, the materiality, the materiality of the shelter, respected, turned, uh, turned social, made social as a territory. You can imagine how things might play out differently if, for example, the first person to arrive in the morning is a, a street cleaner tasked to clear up the bus shelter, or the police. No such respect for this as a territory. This is an invasion of a wider territory of the bus shelter. We'll come back to this um, later. So, so borrowing from ethnomethodology, um, slightly. We're trying to think of, about um, territories as produced as a two-part pair. Uh, the production here, a setting, out, a setting out of a stall in Goffman's language, um, then accomplished through its treatment as, as a territory, through respect. Um, and and <coughs> this is uh, reminiscent of Goffman's remarks on territories of the South. Uh, again, thinking about the fence. Um, ter territories thus marked serve a dual purpose of maintaining distance and thus healthy respect or social respect, um, whilst enabling engagement and thus regard the, the neighbours chatting over a fence, for example, being a, being a way in which fences come to play in, in more social relations. Um, the point being that outreach work um, and the, the caring encounter proceeds from the accomplishment of common ground, spatially, interactionally, um, socially. Thinking uh, in a slightly broader sense, um, we're interested in thinking through the way, and if we skip back to the map um, before, that if you think about outreach as a mobile practice, we don't want to say that outreach workers simply patrol a pre-marked territory, given perhaps on a map, or a pre-existing uh, kind of boundary of the moral responsibility of the city, but rather we want to say that their patrols produce territory in and through their very practices. And you can take a sideways step here and think of this in the same way about how city territories are made and remade through the practices of, of street cleaning crews, for example, of police patrol, even if traffic wardens have a particular um, constitutive um, role in, in production of, of city space. So the key point here is that urban territories can be thought of as mobile, practical and situated productions in which pedestrian uh, mobility is absolutely central. Um, and the kind of intersection, if you want, the intersection of these different patrols which mark out and serve different interests in relation to city space um, find care practices just as um, the territories of their homeless clients, the care practices of outreach workers are themselves vulnerable. This is a, a fleeting encounter. It's, it's no coincidence it takes place at, um, this would be about quarter to seven in the morning before the cleaning crews arrive to remake the territory as a bus shelter, before the commuters arrive, before the visitors arrive to, to use the space. So territories are also uh, rhythmic and our research is um, engaging with that idea. Um, I'm really conscious of time, so if you've got any more questions about the territories bit, we can come back to that. Um, where this has taken us, and especially where we start to see some of the intersections between uh, mobilities research and, and urban ethnography and urban sociology more general, is really that the mobilities perspective brings a kind of um, perspective rather than paradigm. <laughs> I just realised it slipped in there. Um, but the mobilities perspective brings um, a kind of necessary critical engagement with some of the dominant uh, sedentary and static assumptions about territories, um, <coughs> exclusory spaces definitions of public and private um, and in particular we're keen to, to
to puncture um, some of those dominant ideas with, with precise uh, empirical uh, engagement with, with people's, uh, people whose lot is uh, tied up in the, uh, in the production and circulation of city territories. Um, I won't say too much about the situated uh, mobilities aspect, only that it obviously um, connects with a good deal of the work that's been done here, in particular Ole's, but um, you know, other people's too. But we're interested in thinking about how we might understand city spaces produced in and through practical situated mobile actions. Um, um, I, I, in particular, as an interactionist sociologist um, by kind of trade and training, I'm interested in also how we might take an attention to mobility to then rework some of the kind of sedentary assumptions that are present in the work of uh, Gottman, Sachs and Garfinkel as well, which is a particularly um, productive project. Something that I would add to, to the list of intersections actually earlier that's been taken up by people like Eric Laurier, obviously, but also in Europe by people like Lorenzo Mondada and uh, the excellent network of people in Scandinavia looking at ethnomethodology and conversation analysis. Um, <laughs> is that time up? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to ignore it. Um, <laughs> so, um, the, the question I really wanted to ask was, was can we, can we um, borrow an idea um, present in the work of Goffman but elucidated by Anne Warfield rules of treating mobility as a production order? Um, I think really this is perhaps what I think of as, as the strongest statement of, of the mobilities paradigm, perspective, framing. It's not simply that things, uh, we've already kind of debunked this gloss, but not simply that things move more and more and they move more quickly, but that social relations are produced in and through mobilities um, and circulations, although we can come back to that distinction later. So mobilities are more than movement, more than simple movement, but mobilities are constitutive of of social relations and the contours and frictions of every, everyday urban life, which is what we're interested in, but also of knowledges, subjectivities, places, atmospheres, uh, resistances, and movements, and so on. So to, to kind of transpose that idea of the interaction order is to move beyond simple dichotomies. And uh, Ole's done something of this in trying to not reconcile, but move past uh, sedentary and nomadic um, versions of mobility. We can also leave behind dichotomous relations of, of structure and agency and also people and systems, which is one that we, we had raised earlier, by positioning mobilities as um, a constitutive order, which is both containing of affordances, um, but also complex relations of constraints that are placed upon uh, settings, experiences, places, uh, actors, and, and their actions. Um, and really, this is... Uh, I think this connects with something that Mimi uh, said earlier in relation to that mobilities have a constitutive outside. Um, and here we're thinking through how intersections between mobilities research and urban ethnography might point to the ways in which we might better understand urban space and embodied spatiality. Again, in moving past um, dichotomous understandings um, that still that are still dominant within um, social science approaches to, to urban space and other areas too, and I think this really is where the critical purchase on mobilities um, comes in, and is also as as we've seen um, a means of uh, providing effective um, sorry an effective means of realising social change. So really, um, we see this as as uh, treating treating the mobilities um, sorry treating mobilities as a production order leaves us with. Uh, a theoretical and empirical project, um, an attention to systems, affordances, constraints, that the mobilities order, um, and of course you include here things, persons, information, etc., materialities, um, come to give presence to. So how is it that mobilities give a presence to um, these systems in the first instance? And within this framing, it seems to us at least that there's a, a continued, um, enhanced even, contribution of local studies and pedestrian ethnographies, and as, as Tom alluded to, it's perhaps not so much for us a question of um, our mobile methods, but, but paying uh, a close, uh, albeit pedestrian, um, attention to, to, the method, to the mobile methods in and through which people um, practice their everyday mobilities. Thanks. Sorry for being over the time.